You plotting on me, boy? No, sir. Over the past few months, really since summer, prices on certain cards have just skyrocketed at definitely an unhealthy pace, and I don't know why. And in this video, we're going to explore the reasons why uh, it could be the case. But I also have some, before we do that, let's take a look at some examples. So here's a Griffey card, and a friend asked me, will the Griffey Upper Deck PSA 10, which it's currently just last sold for $4,000, $400, roughly $4,500. Uh, will it be more or less than that in two years, five years, uh, 10 years from now? And and just look at the chart of this thing. We saw an, uh, this card was always, I mean, Griffey was retired at this point. This card was always under a thousand dollar card. The pie, you could argue, okay, there's so many more people in the hobby now, but the, unfortunately they don't, the new people in the hobby are buying something that isn't really rare and also has a lot of competition. And, and we'll get into that, but you could see this huge spike and it wasn't a two month spike. This didn't happen in three months as some people will make it seem. This happened at the beginning of 2020 when COVID happened in March and it, it really escalated all the way until, oh, mid 2021 to early 2022 and this card had already seen its peak and fallen but some cards still kept going up until the end of 2021 uh but this griffey card sees a huge spike and now it found a home w well higher than what it was it was under a thousand dollar card prior to the boom and after the boom it found a healthy home at about 13 1400 dollars but what we'll see in the past few months. And one reason I want to mention before we jump to that, there are 4,300 in this pop count in the, uh, in the PSA 10, which is not necessarily rare. It's not rare at all. There's not 20, there's not 60, there's 4,300. And, and if we look at the Mantle rookie card, I mean, just total population, just the, the amount graded in total is less than 3,000. And in the high grade, it's very, very rare. But there's under 3,000 total where the Griffey 10, just of this one rookie card, is his most iconic uh, you know, rookie card, has 4,300. So do keep that in mind. It's really hard to compare any vintage where there was one set printed the entire year versus other years where there's many sets printed. Now, this card happens to be one of the most printed cards of all time. Uh, over, uh, We're pushing 200,000 total graded Griffey rookie cards in the 89 upper deck. Not 3,000 total. An an another thing with, yeah, okay, so 10, there's 4,300. Where's 185 of these things, 185,000 of these things graded? At one point, it was the most graded card of all time. It's still at 185,000, might be the most graded card of all time. Will the Griffey card be under over 4,500 in five years? A, hey, look what happened last time it spiked like this. And any crazy spike like this, it, it, it don't buy that peak. Do not buy the peak. And Marissa. Don't do it. <coughs> My throat's dry, I'm sorry. And, and here's another issue, and we'll get off Griffey and look at a couple other players, but here's another issue with it. Here's his Bowman Griffey rookie, uh, PSA 10 rookie, and it, it's selling for $430, and there's another almost 3,000 of these in a PSA 10. 2,600, 20... 2670 and and look at the price drop 430 bucks and it gets there there's even more nuance here because this is really his biggest card some want to say oh, okay is sure the most iconic card is that upper deck 89 but because or uh, because the pop count is so big you know it's now escalated it's, that that card was a two thousand dollar card this griffey card was selling for you know for a couple years there at around two thousand bucks and it just, it's now shot up to 4,400 more than doubled in, in this last six months year. And the true rare stuff with the 159, this, this Bowman Tiffany, there's only 159 in a 10. And maybe that price is still too high. Maybe not. But because it's, it's not, you could say it's definitely not as iconic as the upper deck card. But because it's rare and pop count is, is what matters at the end of the day. Pop count is what is true rare when these if there's many of these cards up for sale all the time it, it it doesn't mean yours is is extra valuable there's there's many options for someone to buy that upper deck PSA 10 card 
there's not many options that there's not many times of the year this card here comes for sale and when it does it creates a little bit of a price frenzy so that makes sense here's his tops traded rookie there's almost 15,000 of these things in a PSA 10. It sells for 150. Where the mantle has no competition. That's the only 1952 Topps mantle. It's the only 1951 Bowman. It's the only card printed in the entire year. And also, it didn't hold up in high grade. It's very rare. Many people didn't keep them. Definitely didn't keep them in great shape. And again, the Topps traded has a Tiffany. And the Tiffany is selling for $6,000. Why? Because there's 345. It's definitely not as iconic as the upper deck PSA 10, out, although it outsells it because pop count is what truly is going to make. If you want longevity in a card, you should definitely be basing it off pop count and, and really almost, of course, the player. But to tell me that, you know, this card's going to stay over 4,500 in years to come. With all the competition it has, with all the the, the price uh, baked in already, with the pop count is is high, you could find this card any day you want on, on several platforms. I don't see this any chart that looks like this. Yeah, that's a huge red flag. That's a huge don't buy. Uh, maybe if you knew and bought at the bottom here uh, a year ago, six months ago, but buying this spike is not a good idea don't do it you'll regret it man trust me and it makes you wonder why and so before we get to the why let's look at another i couple iconic players a little more modern here is brady whose rookie is in 2000 so 11 years after griffey and the card scene looked a lot different from 89 to the year 2000 and this card did the same thing. It found a home. It lost a lot of value after the boom, and it found a home the last couple years. And I don't know, $7,000, it seems like, based on this chart, but something happened in August, July of 2025 that sent this card on a frenzy up to where now it's it's $12,000, and there's been a couple sales way above that, over $14,000. It's more rare, and Griffey, uh, his cards are not as rare as the Brady rookie cards. Brady does have more rookie cards, but the pop counts are not close to as high. There's 1,200 in a PSA 10. It still doesn't make this card ultra rare, but it's definitely more rare than Griffey. But why this spike the last few months after it found a true price? And he's been retired and not winning since then, not doing anything since then. Getting into the card game, getting into every game. And there's the spike. There's the huge loss. Hello? Hello? Anybody in there? $25,000 this card almost reached during the spike. Twice almost. Many sales in between 15 to 25 grand in those two years. And then it, it bottomed down all the way down to seven grand. Maybe some sales pushing five grand. It's an 80% loss. Mm. And so now for some reasons, from some wild reason, the last couple months, last year, these cards have been, been just skyrocketing. Why? The question is why? Do not buy the peak. I repeat, do not buy the peak. And, and why? why? This is not a normal spike. You can't tell me, oh, in the past six months, year, so much more people have got in. Oh, in the past six months, year. So much more big money has got in because that's not the case. They've been getting in for the last five years. And so before we go more a little on Brady, I just want to point out to Griffey that his most expensive card sold is $84,000. And it's this Upper Deck Auto Jersey 1998. When was that sale? Uh, not in the last two years. So who knows what it would sell for October, 2022. But that's not the point I want to make. The point I want to make is look at all these options. You can it's not the same as when there was one card of the player for the year and that's it. There was no other sets. There was no inserts. There was no competition. So which one of these? Is it the Upper Deck 98 piece of Action Series 3 autographed to 24? Is it the Metal Universe PMG to 50? Is it the Skybox Premium Star Rubies numbered to 50? 
Is it the 93 Griffey Finest Refractor? Is it the 97 Flare Showcase number to 100? Is it the 97 EX Extra Credentials number to 99? And I, I could keep going. So the point is, is when you think it's one card, you, we don't know what card it is. And in the future, why is all this stuff going to stay propped up? Griffey, sure. The guys that are my age or a little older, we saw Griffey and are enamored with Griffey. But the kids of today, the youth of today will have no connection to Griffey. And you say, okay, they have, we have no connection to Mantle and he holds value. Well, there's still a generation that's out there that did. And that price is now at a certain level. And after that generation is gone, anyone that didn't hold a high price, say it's not going. They were not, if it's not now, it's, it, but that's not the point. The point is, is that there's m a lot of this stuff where there wasn't a lot of mantle. Anyone that wanted to go back and buy a Babe Ruth, well, Babe Ruth doesn't have many cards. And Babe Ruth's cards that he does have are extremely rare. Ty Cobb doesn't have many cards. Joe DiMaggio doesn't have a ton of cards. Even our boy Jackie Robinson doesn't have a lot of cards. Where that's not the case with Griffey or Brady or any of the modern players or players that played since there's been more than one set. And so if we keep moving, so let's go back to Brady really quick. Brady's 2000 Bowman Chrome. Again, found a home at about $7,000 over the last couple years. And something weird happened in July or this summer where now all the prices just escalated up, up, up. And all of a sudden it's selling for $13,000 when six months, no, not even, Four months ago, it was a $7,500 card and it had been that way for two years. And now all of a sudden, it's just over summer. And why? The question is why? You can't tell me everyone just moving their money into this stuff. That's not the case. There's too many different options, too many different players. And why does the price just escalate so quickly? Even if people were putting their money, it doesn't make sense why there's a $14,000 sale one month after a $7,000 sale. Oh, this card looks a little better. It's a little better shape. They're already a 10. You know, so that doesn't work. And, and then he has competition. Here's his 2000 Bowman, which actually is rare. There's only 475 in a 10, where in that last card we looked at, there's, oh, there's 1200 in a 10. And that's it's the chrome should sell for far more. It's the more pre premium product, but in this case, it doesn't because there's only 475 and they're selling for roughly the same. And you see the same spike. This is the card's a little more volatile over the past couple years, but something happened. May, there's a jump, and then in June and July, and then really from July to August is that big jump again. In July, the car sold for 7,300. In August, there's a sale for $10,000. It's already a 10 and now the card is pushing $12,000. Why? The question is why everyone just had an epiphany. Everyone got a memo, go buy that Brady card. No, that's not the case. And if you look at Brady, he has many options. He has this skybox card in a PSA 10 selling for a thousand and there's a thousand in that pop count. He has the Skybox Dominion. He has the Fleer Showcase Rookie. He has the Fleer Tradition Rookie. He has the EX Rookie, Leaf Certified. We keep scrolling down, SPX. And he has many cards printed afterwards that people want to say are, are going to hold value or sell for lots. So you cannot compare this stuff. If you want to say, oh, you look back at that, that real vintage and you look back at how it's done well over generations, this is different product. And so you have to keep that in mind in your analysis of how you're you're looking at it. It's it cannot be compared. Oh, you you. So the last player we'll look at is another legend, Barry Sanders, and his scorecard is selling for twenty one hundred dollars. It's the same jump the others took from July to August. All of a sudden, it was selling at a thirteen hundred dollar clip, basically for two years. And something happened from July to August to put this thing at two thousand, roughly almost two thousand dollars. Today, the last sale was for twenty one hundred dollars. And change. And with Sanders, the bit there's a big drop because his pro set 10 is 170 bucks, and they're roughly the same pop count. This one has 2600 and I think this pro set has a little over 3000 in a 10. But the jump is from 2100 Actually, the last sale price, 2175 This last sale price of the pro set PSA 10, 171 
So this card's two thousand more dollars just based off. Oh, this is the score versus this is the pro set. Pop counts roughly the same. He also has the tops traded in a ten, selling for one hundred sixty-seven dollars. So there's many options. It's not the same. And why did this card just decide to take go from thirteen hundred over the past two years and take a jump to over two grand? You plotting on me, boy? No, sir. So just don't forget, these are not the only rookie cards of these players or even these players' biggest cards. It's not the same product as the pre-80s cards where just one set was printed a year. It can be cannot be compared. And those are the reasons why. And this is all speculation. And, and it's conducting a financial transaction, as Investopedia puts it here, that could yield a significant gain or loss. And right now, at this, at this huge spike on some of these cards, and the question is why? And my take on it is this: these new buyback programs that have partnered with PSA or PSA is offering through its buyback program. And this is the Power Packs. And Power Pack says it immediately offers you 90% of the value. Now, they create, they set what the value is. But here, all PSA graded cards in your vault are eligible for PSA offers, eBay consignment. And if someone decides, hey, I'm going to manipulate the market here a little bit. Let's create a bigger sale. Someone I know is going to buy the card for, for more than it was, some of this big jump in price. And then we can get a buyback on it. For the, Now the new price created is higher and we can get a buyback on this new price. And that's the only thing I can think right now that's changing the game and why this huge spike all of a sudden on some of these cards is people are putting not legitimate uh, sales on these cards to, to make the value higher and then when the algorithm of this psa buyback program sees what what the value last was oh okay well the value's gone up and they see that new price or the new and the new sale and they're going to offer 90 percent on the new sale price versus the actual 1300 dollars we saw forever and so now it creates an inflated price the first price is inflated then they sell it back to for 90 percent. now we've created a higher comp for some of these cards other than that i i just i don't see these spikes being genuine they, they raise huge flags the last time we understand why it happened it was a covid boom people were sitting at home people were getting free money and a lot of people were getting back into sports cards for the people i hear oh there's more people in sports cards today than ever no the, the peak was here the P everyone was at home. Everyone had nothing better to do. And everyone was getting into cards. Card shows were when they came back were truly sports card shows. Now they're Pokemon card shows with sports on the side. The people are, it's not more people. It may seem like it because new people have gotten in, but it'll never reach what it was when everyone was sitting at home playing with cards. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe. If you have not, as always, thank you for watching and have a great day. What up, everybody? This is Robert Ory, a.k.a. Big Shot Bob, and you're watching Professional Sports Cards. Hey, by the way, go buy my rookie card.